Welcome to today's presentation on key drivers in successful continuous delivery. There are a number of recurring issues that we encounter in software development. How many of these have you heard? The software works on my machine, I don't know why it's not working for you. I can't debug it as I don't have access to production. I don't want to make that change as deployments take way too long, let's not do it twice. There are missing things in my environment. Could we rebuild this if we needed to? It's going to take you a couple weeks for us to build you a new environment. It's not my fault. Go ask that other team to fix it. We don't have time to do it correctly. I need to fix this urgent issue first. We made it into production because our developers are amazing. They did great work and they can do it again for the next version. I'm not able to reproduce that issue. Do we have the right build and test? No? We can update it to the latest version, but that means I'm going to have to stop all my existing tests. DevOps is a culture, movement, or practice that emphasizes the collaboration and communication of multiple team members, including software developers, testers, operations, and others, while automating the process of software delivery and infrastructure changes. The goal of DevOps is to create a culture and environment where building, testing, and releasing software can happen rapidly, frequently, and more reliably. The collaboration of these primary groups does have its challenges though, and some of the issues on the previous screen are caused by cultural challenge, as the three parties each have their own reward structure. Developers, for example, are generally rewarded by how many features are created and released, whereas testers are frequently rewarded for ensuring that releases have a good quality, such as a low number of bugs. What about operations? They are rewarded for how stable and secure infrastructure is, so they are very risk averse. The trick to achieving good DevOps culture is bringing these three groups together and integrating their objectives. Continuous delivery, on the other hand, is an approach for doing iterative and incremental software delivery, whereby teams ensure that every change to the system can be released and that any version can be released at the push of a button. This is not to say that every change immediately must get deployed, but rather we can choose to deploy at any time. Continuous delivery aims to make releases easy and reliable so organizations can deliver them frequently with less risk and can get feedback quicker from the end users. We strive to make repeatable, consistent deployments become an integral part of the business process. Let's look at the differences between DevOps and continuous delivery. As we said before, DevOps is about culture. It's about creating better collaboration between development, testing, and operations, and focuses on building well-defined processes and being agile. Continuous delivery, on the other hand, focuses on ensuring that every change is well-tested and integrated and is ready to be deployed to production with as little human interaction as possible. We use automation as much as possible. Gartner recently stated that DevOps is a tool-centric philosophy that supports a continuous delivery value chain. You could probably embrace and practice the DevOps philosophy without implementing a tool stack, automation, or continuous delivery, just simply by focusing on culture and processes, but it wouldn't be anywhere as efficient. Looking at the similarities between DevOps and continuous delivery, they both possess a shared background in agile methods and lean thinking, and they both include focusing on small and quick changes and providing value to the end customer. They're both well communicated and focus on internal collaboration, and they share goals of a quicker time to market with reduced risk. There are some key differences though. Continuous delivery focuses on using automation as much as possible to ensure that any changes to production are well tested and integrated with as little human interaction as possible. DevOps is less about tools and more about culture, breaking down walls and silos to help teams communicate better. 
it could be argued that continuous delivery is one of the key steps in DevOps. To achieve continuous delivery, you need a close collaborative working relationship between everyone involved in delivery, often referred to as a DevOps culture. And we need extensive automation of all possible parts of the delivery process, usually using a deployment pipeline, which we will discuss later. We need to focus on building quality at every step in the deployment process. Everyone is responsible for quality and delivery, and we let people focus on solving problems that humans are good at, not at doing repeatable tasks that we could automate. The team should prioritize keeping software deployable over working on new features so that the software is deployable throughout its life cycle. This means working in smaller chunks of work, no long running projects. We should be able to perform push button deployments of any version of the software to any environment on demand. We should be relentlessly continuously improving, which requires monitoring and feedback and anyone should be able to get automated fast feedback on the production readiness of their systems at any time that anyone makes a change. What should we be focusing on? The first principle of the Agile Manifesto is that our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. This should be why we are doing projects so the work we do should help us to accomplish this. Additionally, many of our continuous goals also directly relate to Agile principles. For example, we should deliver working software frequently, and working software should be the primary measure of progress. We should have continuous attention to technical excellence and continuous improvement, and we should build projects around motivated individuals focus on continuously improving and give the team the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. There are some must do's for continuous delivery. We must version everything. This includes all development code, test code and test resources and configuration scripts. Anything that is needed to build and test must be controlled. We should use continuous integration, which we will cover in the upcoming slides. And we should use automation. Anything that should be repeatable and predictable will help speed things up and also reduces errors. We must rigorously manage our environments. They must be repeatable and should be as production-like as possible and have a low number of differences. And we should automate the environment configuration. We should strive for visibility. It should be easy for everyone to see the current state. Ideally, we should have a dashboard where anyone can see the current state and monitor issues. We should shift left and bring, bring pain forwards. This means testing every step, finding out and dealing with problems as soon as possible. If we find a problem, fix it. Don't delay it for the future. And last but not least, we should focus on small steps, identify a problem, try and solve it, evaluate, and repeat. There are some really big benefits of continuous delivery. The first big benefit is reduced deployment risk. Since you are deploying smaller changes, there's less to go wrong, and it's easier to fix problems if something does go wrong. And an increased number of deployments means we get better at doing deployments, along with increased flexibility of giving the organization the option to release at any point with minimal added cost or risk. Everyone is involved in production releases, such as QA, operations, etc., and everyone is involved in making the release more efficient. As the entire organization identifies difficult areas of the process and finds ways to fix them through automation, better collaboration, and improved working practices, by continuously rehearsing the process, the organization becomes better at doing it, and so releasing becomes second nature, like breathing, rather than traumatic. User feedback is a big benefit. 
because the biggest risk to any software effort is that you end up building something that isn't useful. The earlier and more frequently you get working software in front of real users, the quicker you get feedback to find out how valuable it is or where it needs to be improved. Better quality software, because if there are issues, turnaround time is quicker, and automated tests find issues quicker, and better functionality, because we get the correct functionality in front of customers faster. We also have improved quality of software by forcing the team to fix problems as they are found rather than leaving things till later. We have a faster time to market, reduced development, testing, and release time so that we can get new features to market quicker, known as a velocity culture. Companies are doing this in real world examples with amazing success. Amazon, for instance, is deploying code every 11.7 seconds to production. We also have a reduced delivery time by improved processes and reduced testing time. An added benefit is believable progress, as it's easier to believe in the success of a project by seeing it working in production rather than just seeing a list of features for an in-progress project.